Hi, this is Ilka Morse at CDLC. What I'd like to do today um, in this video is to show you how to set up a compound object and uh, create a tab delimited file that will define the structure of the compound object and also um, upload that compound object's metadata into the project client. In Content DM, each compound object must have its own file. So what I have here is a file that I've set up. This is the structure inside that file. With a compound object, you need to, need to have at least one uh, subfolder within the folder carrying the compound object. In this particular one, I actually have three. Um, this is the way I do my workflow. I have a folder with my TIFFs, my archival TIFFs, and as I scan, I also make my JPEGs. Uh, you don't have to do the JPEGs. You can use Content DM to uh, create JPEGs and JPEG 2000s uh, from your archival TIFFs. Also, we have a third folder, and this contains my transcripts that are text um, files. Also in this folder, as you create it, is uh, the Excel file that you use to create your tab delimited file. One of the important things to know from uh, this is that uh, if you are doing transcripts, the file name for the transcript for each uh, JPEG or each digital file has to be exactly the same as the file name for the digital file before the extension. So this part before the period TXT has to be the same as for the JPEG before the dot JPG. Okay. The other thing to know about um, uploading transcripts, in this particular example, I have three digital files. And so the most text files I could have is three. I can't have a text file that does not have an associated digital file. I can have less than three. I could have three digital files and only one text file, but not the reverse. So that's another important thing to remember. Your tab delimited file is created from an Excel file. So let me open this up so you can see it. And here is my Excel file that I have created. Now, what I'd like to say before I start this, I want to go back to um, New York Heritage. In New York Heritage, under contributors, under technical guides and help, there are help sheets on using uh, tab delimited files for uh, compound objects. Um, there actually is also one for tab delimited files and multiple single items, and I've done a video for that also. There is a third file for doing um, monographs, that is um, compound objects with hierarchy. But at this time, we are asking everyone to not do these kinds of compound objects because there is an issue with their display in the New York Heritage website. Uh, CDLC staff will get back to you when this is no longer an issue. So going back to our Excel file, The first row must contain your metadata fields. And in this case, um, the example I'm doing, I do not have all of our metadata fields. You do not have to have all of your metadata fields, uh, but you must have title and you must have the file name. Now this file name column is not the metadata field file name. This is your, an object metadata field. This is what tells Content DM what digital file all this information goes to. Because we have transcripts, we also have um, must have this column in this particular um, example. If we did not have transcripts, you would not have to have this uh, column. And this tells Content DM what text file goes with what digital file name. As far as the next part of the structure, in a compound object, you have 
the page metadata records for your three um, digital files. Here they are right here. And you also have what's called the object metadata record. So in the end, you have four metadata records, as you can see here. If I'd had, say, eight digital files, I would have eight page metadata records here, and then I would have the one object metadata record here. And in other words, then I would have nine records, metadata records listed here. The other thing to notice is the, the second row, as I've just explained, is your object metadata record. This is the metadata for the complete uh, um, compound object. And notice I have no transcript file because there's no um, transcript to the whole thing. And there is no file name. The only files are to the page metadata record. So your file name for your second row is always empty. And if you're doing transcripts, that is always empty. So that's very important to remember. Uh, that is also illustrated on that help sheet that I showed you that is up in New York Heritage. Now, once I've done this and made sure that I have the metadata that I want, um, and that I've gone in and I've saved this. I now need to save this Excel file as a text tab delimited file. Okay, and I would click on save here. I actually already have that file created, so I don't need to do that. Um, so I'm going to cancel out and go back. Whoops go back to my folder. And here is my uh, tab delimited file. Now, this is really important. Do not, I would recommend you do not work in your tab delimited file. If you need to go back in and change your metadata, correct mistakes, add information, you should always work in your Excel file and then resave it again as the new tab delimited file. The other important a uh, piece of information to know is that a Excel file from a Mac will not work. Your Excel file has to be created in uh, a Windows machine. Uh, ContentDM does not, uh, does not, uh, I don't know how else to say this, it can't use a tab delimited file that was created from an Excel file that was created uh, in a Mac. So that is an important piece to remember for those of you who have uh, different machines. Now, if you have a Mac that's also running Windows, that's another scenario, okay? So now we have our digital files and our tab delimited file. And we are going to content DM. I've created a um, project. I've called it test. The first thing you need to do, and this is very important, is to go to your edit metadata template. And for the project template general, you need to go in and edit it, go all the way down, and at least make sure that content DM is picking up the metadata field file name for you. Okay, and because this is a compound object, the same thing for that template. You go down, make sure that file name, and click on OK. When you're doing a compound object and you are putting metadata into the metadata template, the object metadata goes into this template. And the page metadata goes into this template. Okay, let me emphasize this again. If you do not set this up this way, let's go, then in Excel, when you go to that, you would need two columns with file name. This file name column is the object, not the metadata one. And because I'm picking up the metadata in th through content DM, I don't need to have the file name metadata in this. Uh, Excel file 
which I use to create my tab delimited file. Okay. Back to content DM. I've set these up and now I'm going to do add compound objects. I use the compound object wizard to create this compound object. I click on add. We're doing a document with no hierarchy. As I mentioned, uh, right now we'd rather you not do any documents with hierarchy. A picture cube and a postcard are just variations on a document. The compound object structure and metadata are defined by tab delimited text file. This is yes. That's because we're using the tab delimited file. Click on next. And I need to go find that tab delimited file. Uh, so I need to go to my desktop, compound object, there it is, and I've loaded it in. What do I wish to um, import? I'm importing digital files from a directory. I'm going to go um, browse for it, and I need to go down and find my file. I'm bringing my JPEGs in. There are my three JPEGs, okay, and I'm clicking on next. Do you want the compound, a content DM to generate display images from the items you import? This sort of seems like a trick question because of course you want images uh, generated. However, what they're really asking you here is do you want content DM to generate display images from your TIFFs? Content DM can take your TIFFs 2000. So depending on your workflow, you could um, do this instead of creating that folder I did with my JPEGs. Uh, you would go into this image options to set what you want, um, how you want those images generated. So I'm going to click next. Specifying page names. You can use the file names as titles as long as you've set them up with um, ignoring the information before the underscore. I've not done this in, in this particular example, so I'm going to unclick these and I'm going to use label pages using sequence. Now, I want to specify that these page names they're talking about is what is creating the user menu on the right hand side of your compound object. This is not your title metadata. This is um, the page menus. I, I think I probably can show you this. Let me see if I uh, can go in here quickly. And um, let me see if I, I don't know if there's any in here. Let me go, let me go back here for a minute and pick maybe, this one might be a better one to pick. And um, I'll try the yearbook one. And I'm going to open the one yearbook. And here you can see over here are the page titles that they created. In this case, they probably, given those page titles they have, uh, they used um, an extension uh, on their file names with the underscore to get these um, very detailed um, page titles. Back to content DM. Next, I have the transcript. Oh, and I've set mine up, as you can see, uh, sequencing starting with page one, it goes page two, page three. Transcript, I need to go and again find my folder for this compound object. And I need to open up the text file, which has my three text files with the transcripts, and click on OK. If you were doing this with no transcripts, you would have no transcripts listed here selected over here. I'm going to click on next and here's the summary. I'm importing a single document. I'm using a tab delimited file. Um, uh, the title pages are being uh, created using page and then starting with one. The transcripts are contained in this directory. Okay and I'm going to click on finish. Uh, the summary is no errors, no warnings in a document of three pages and I click on close. Okay, so here everything's 
brought in. Now this is very important, map fields. We're bringing in these imported fields here. And these are our collection metadata fields and we need to match them. So title to title, we have that. We've brought in creator and we want that to go into our creator field. Date of original, we want to go into our um, date of original. Resource identifier, this is actually an old metadata field we used to have. The equivalent in this data is identifier. Now what's important to note here is if you were bringing in um, metadata from one of your catalogs, you'd extracted it out and your fields uh, names were different for the catalog, all you have to do is if you're using um, the metadata in a tab development file is that you do this mapping of the fields. So you take your imported fields and you map them to the collection fields that we have. You must have a title. You have to have title to title, okay? Um, and as I also said, you must have this file name for object file name so they know what the digital files are. So again, going back, we now have the rights one, so I need to create that one. There's my rights field and that's my transcript, which I want to go into my transcript field. If I can find it, there we go. Okay, so I've mapped everything. Everything's fine there and I'm going to finish now. And again, I have no errors, no warnings and they've made one compound object. Click on close and here, is the metadata that came in through my um, tab delimited file. If I double click, it's easier if I view the structure through spreadsheet. And here you have the object metadata record and you have the three digital files, my page metadata records. If you go all the way over, you'll see there are the three digital file names I had and this now is the default file name. We require a file name for upload. Content DM gives our object metadata uh, record a, um, a default file name, index.cpd. So anytime you see that on a record, you know that that's part of a compound object. It's the object record. Okay, so there you can see what I have added here. And I have to have title for um, my for my upload. I also need to have, well, actually it's better for me to go to view structure and go down this way to look at this. So I have to have file name, which I have. And I have to have rights. This is obviously not the correct format for the right statement. Uh, you need to go to uh, rightsstatement.org and using Peter Hurdle's um, website, please decide uh, whether your item is in copyright, out of copyright, or that you're not sure. Uh, Library Council here is very easy. It's a control vocabulary, I popped it in. I need a digital collection name. That's not required. These two fields are not required for upload, but I'm just gonna show you. And I'm gonna just call this a dummy test. Um, and collection ID, I do have to have that for upload. And I'm popping that in, that's my dummy test one. Oh, let's see what else, I'll put something else in here. Here I have physical format. This is um, meeting minutes. So let me find that, there we go. And click that, put that in there. Okay, date of original, I have that and I can copy it and put that one date into hidden date, so I have that done. And I'm going to, to actually stop there, I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna view in the spreadsheet because for upload and for bringing anything back down to do editing, I have to have title, which I have. And I need collection ID, so I'm gonna make sure that's filling down. I, I want to know that my identifier's on every record. That's how I can keep these all together up in the admin site. 
Um, I like to make sure that every record has the digital collection name and the library council. And actually, probably also the publisher of digital. I just don't have that information in there right now. You need to have the rights statement in every um, record and the file name. So we have the minimum of what we need here. And I'm going to click on save and close. Now normally you would fill in um, your metadata here. You could have filled in that metadata sheet more if you'd wanted to. However, um, I'm just using this as an example of how you can do this. I'm going to select my item and I'm going to upload for approval. And as you can see down here, it's uploading. You can notice it uploading down in the lower left corner. And I could go to the content admin site through this way, but I'm going to just use my alt tab and go up and go to the admin site and click on approve. And here we have our one item. Uh, we have no new control vocabularies terms. However, um, I want to emphasize I don't use the full approval queue action uh, on a regular basis just because um, I don't want people making a mistake. If you have a new control vocabulary term or terms and you use your full approval queue action section, those new terms will not be added to your control vocabulary. Okay, I always work in the detailed approved Q action section. And here, if we had new controlled uh, vocabulary terms, we would approve them right here. We don't have any, so we just need to select our one item, click on approve. Remember that um, it's a two step process to approve an item in um, the admin site. You have to approve and you have to index. If you don't index, your item will not show. If you don't index, your edits won't show. So I use the immediate indexing section. And it's taken um, the last couple times I've done this a little bit of time to for the indexing to um, complete. So what I'd like to say to you is once the indexing is complete, you can go click on view collection to see how your item is displaying. Obviously, if you were to do something and, and um, approved and indexed an item with this little uh, metadata in it, at some point you would have to come back and bring a copy of it back to the project client to add more metadata. Uh, there is a video showing you how to um, bring a copy of an item on the server back to the project client. We have also created a video on how to um, upload multiple single items with a de tab delimited file if you're interested. Uh, don't forget that there are the help sheets, the three help sheets up on uh, the New York Heritage website. Let me show you that again. Sorry, I messed there. So if I go into New York Heritage, and I go to contributors, four contributors, and technical guides and help. Okay, and there are your three um, items, your three help sheets. And this is still not uh, indexed, so I'm going to stop this video. If you have any questions about the content um, on this in this video, please contact your CDLC staff for help. And um, thank you for listening. <laughs>